Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and this is a kind of follow-up video to a previous one where it was about input protection in precision op-amp circuits. And what occurred to me was that once I've read that silicon diodes are also light sensitive, especially if they are in a glass case like here, this 1N4148 standard small signal and small power diode. Now let's uh, check this. I've put 15 volts of reverse voltage here to the diode and using the microcurrent from David L. Jones what we see here displayed is uh, not the value in millivolts um, but at the moment we have one millivolt is equal to one nanoamps so we're seeing now 6.2 nanoamps reverse current and let now let's take just a flashlight and see if something changes and you can see the reverse current slightly goes up when I put light onto it. Well, if you think about it, every PN junction is basically also a photocell or solar cell. It works the same way and so we get a larger reverse current. Not very much, but uh, two things we can deduct from this. First of all, a standard 1N4148 or the equivalent 1N914, they are not suitable for precision op-amp protection uh, simply because of two facts. Um, the reverse current is too high with at the moment 6 nanoamps and it's light sensitive so it even is not constant. Um, and of course, if I touch it, you will see a, a large increase. Um, so th this is, uh, of course, I have to be careful if I touch both leads. Uh, then, of course, we don't measure the reverse current. But let's heat it up for a moment. And you can see the reverse current has gone substantially up. So they are also quite temperature dependent. So absolutely not suitable for precision op-amp protections because there we want error currents from the reverse currents of the diodes, of the protection diodes in, in the picoamp range and not in the nanoamp range. So let's try a few others like the standard 1N40000 series and a Schottky diode uh, and let's see if we get higher or lower values. So next is a standard 1N40,000 series silicon diode and you can see um, it's also in the low nanoamps region, the reverse current, so also not suitable. Although th this one is of course not light sensitive because it is encapsulated in a plastic case. So we see no change except for the little heating perhaps. Oh, we do see a very little change, but barely perceptible. Uh, so there is no light sensitivity and the reverse current is even slightly lower, but still by a factor of 100 or 1000 higher than what we need. So next is a Schottky diode uh, from the BAT series. I think it's a BAT 45. And you can see the reverse current is a factor of 10 higher and it's also in the same kind of uh, glass case as the 1N4148 and let's see if it's also light sensitive. Yes, it is even more than the 1N4148 so it changes by about 10% here when I use the flashlight. So also Schottky diodes, uh, although they have lower forward voltages, but they have higher reverse currents. So next is a Schottky diode from Vishai, a BAT48, I think. And this one, uh, you can discern the Vishai types. They are in a blue painted glass case and they have even higher reverse currents now approaching 300 nanoamps so totally unusable as protection diodes for precision op-amp inputs and the light sensitivity should be 
nearly non-existent. It's hard to discern if this comes from the heating due to the light or, well, they seem to be nearly unsensitive to, to light, but also not suitable as protection diodes with such a high reverse current. So can we find diodes uh, that are also available and not made out of unobtainium uh, that have really low reverse current? Well, there are the best two I've found that are somehow available are the BAS33 and 34 from Vishay. And uh, if we take a look at the reverse current, uh, you can see at room temperature, it goes down to around one nanoamp. So this is uh, the best uh, you can find probably with uh, standard diodes. And they even specify uh, that the reverse current is to be measured with a light intensity below 300 lux. So there is still some light sensitivity, although they are painted with uh, the glass cases painted with blue color. And the second one I found is from Infinity Infineon, the BAV199. Uh, this is an SMD type, a, a dual diode. And this one claims uh, to go to one Pico amp, which I can't believe I don't have one at hand here, uh, so I have just ordered a few. So, can we instead of that use transient voltage suppressors, which sometimes sail as transil or transorp diodes? These are basically Zener diodes, uh, usually two of them in reverse series connections. And if we take a look at a typical data sheet, the reverse current is in the milliamps range. So Zener diodes are also not suitable for input protection, uh, simply because their reverse current is much, much too high. I'll show you another type from another manufacturer here. The reverse or leakage current is in the microamps region, so still much too large, also not suitable. So what remains? Perhaps does a varistor, a, uh, usually a, a MOF, a metal oxide varistor, but, but they could also be made out of silicon carbide. Well, take a look at the data sheet and the reverse current is also below the threshold voltage or the clamping voltage, it's also in the milliamps region, uh, at best in the microamps region, so uh, not suitable. So what remains? There is one very good alternative to uh, extremely expensive picoamp diodes, and this is a simple bipolar small signal transistor or a simple junction fed. Let's try that one. So what I've taken now is a BC548, a standard NPN small signal, small power transistor. And as you can see, the base and the emitter are connected together as the anode of our diode. And the positive voltage, the reverse voltage, is connected to the collector. Uh, so we're using here not the base emitter diode, but we're using the base collector diode. The base emitter diode breaks down between 5 and 7 volts, so it's absolutely not suitable for reverse protection uh, or input protection uh, against reverse, against any adverse voltages at op-amp inputs. But the base collector diode is, and see what we get displayed. Um, this is nearly the offset voltage of, uh, even if I change my hands here, you can see, uh, we can see this as nearly zero. So we're down in the really in the low picoamps region. And at the moment we're measuring the offset voltage of the op amp of the microcurrent. And uh, not, uh, we cannot precisely say how low the reverse current is. 
but it is definitely in the pico amps region so isn't that a nice solution an everyday transistor for a few cents serves as an ultra low reverse current protection diode capable of voltages depending on the type you buy from the series up to 60 volts so nearly perfect and next is an n channel jfet a bf245 so i've put the drain and the source together serving here as the cathode and the anode is the gate and you can see we even get a negative display that means this is definitely the offset of the op amp and the reverse current must be really uh, the lowest and i suppose it is uh, as typical for jfits it's in the very low pico amps single digit pico amps region uh, so this is until now really the best one and probably the cheapest way to get input protection diodes just from a single 20 cent JFET in the single digit pico amps region.